too. Sorry, I'm just waiting for the red light to turn ahead. All right. So once you've added your Bongo activity, it takes you to the general Moodle settings page. So from here, you can name your activity. I do recommend naming it something descriptive. So you can use this for live recordings or for if you're just recording in advance and having your students watching it. So whatever you're doing here, give it something descriptive. Tell them it's a live session and the date and the time or tell them, you know, recorded mm -hmm. lecture. Um, and then whatever your topic is. Um, there's a couple things in these settings that we're going to want to change. The one that we definitely have to change is under the privacy. Uncheck the accept grades from tool option. Now, the reason that we're doing this is it will stop this assignment from showing up in the gradebook. And even if you're not using the Moodle gradebook, if there's something in our default or if the gradebook is visible to students and you don't uncheck it, they will still see it there and kind of ask, why is this in the gradebook? What's happening here? So if we uncheck that, we don't have to worry about it showing up and possibly creating unnecessary stress for the students. The other item that you may want to look in is in this activity completion area. And activity completion is pretty cool because it will work for every single thing that you do add an activity or resource for in Moodle. Um, so if you want to be able to get a report of if your students accessed the lecture or joined, you won't necessarily know how long they watched a lecture or anything, but if you just want to know if they at least accessed it, mm -hmm. you can use this activity completion. And depending on which type of thing you're adding, these um, options might change. But so we'll change completion tracking to show activity as complete when conditions are met. So the student must view the activity to have it marked as complete. Um, there's also this expect complete on. If you were to check that off, whatever date we put in here would show up on the calendar in Moodle. So, but if we, if we don't check, then it will not. Present. Yeah, then it will not. Then it doesn't matter. Um, it won't stop them from accessing the lecture at any point after that date. It's not a due date. It's just saying it will add it to the calendar so students will think to watch it before that point. Catherine? Yeah. Um, it's Chris Spiker. Quick question. Do you have to do this for each Bongo session or yeah. is it or is it one for all? Um, every time you set up a lecture, you will go through this. Um. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right. And then we can hit save and return to course. Um, and it, you can see our session is down here at the bottom. It has the blue B, so we know it's a bongo session, and here it is. Um, for the students, this is the link that they will use to access a live session or access a recording. Mm -hmm. It works for both. It is the same link for the entire meeting. So even if you're holding a live session and you choose to record it, after the recording's processed, this will change from the join link into the recorded link. Oh, good. So for students, it's really easy because it's a one-stop shop. Uh-huh. Good. So if we click on it, the first time you are accessing Bongo, if you have not accessed it at all, it will kind of walk you through a couple steps for setup. And you have to do that setup um, the main setup to set up your account, because it is a third party provider for us. Um, it's just integrated with Moodle. So the first page will come up and ask you to accept their terms and conditions. So you have to check off like privacy and cookies. Um, part of that's because it has to do our single sign on. So you're not setting up your own username and password because it's collecting that information from us. Um, if you want, it automatically checks communications. You can uncheck communications because you don't need to receive emails directly from Bongo if you don't want to. <laughs> um, but then you'll hit OK. And then it'll ask you two additional questions. Course creation. So it'll give you a couple options. But for course creation, you're going to select new. And then for deep linking, it's going to say, do you want to deep link this course? And your answer is going to be yes. 
All right. So always say yes to deep linking, new courses and deep linking. And eventually, after you get through those initial steps, that's one time thing. You don't have to do that every time you add a video, just the first time. Um, not to um, ask, a, not to jump yeah. in and ask a dumb question, but when I clicked on the link, um, it went straight to class creation. Yes. So that means that you already added Bongo in another class, so it has your account. Okay. So it doesn't need the terms and conditions. Okay. So okay. now the first time you're in the class, you'll be good. And just a, okay. a new class and yes to deep linking, and then you will be at this screen. So this screen is what will come up after you have set up at least one Bongo in all of your courses. This will be the screen you come to every time. And it's so it'll say new assignment or new meeting. Mine says copied because I've copied from another class and other things. <laughs> but so new assignment or new meeting. And regardless of if you are doing a recorded lecture or a live session, we are using the meeting tool. So you will hit new meeting. When you get there, it will say schedule sync meeting. So if you are going to just record a lecture and you're ready to record your lecture now, you will click now. If you are having a live session for your class, you will enter the time here. Um, remember, if you are holding live sessions, that you are supposed to hold them during your regularly assigned class time. And because of the way the join links, I recommend scheduling your meeting to start five to 10 minutes before your class time. Mm -hmm. So if I were to set my meeting for 9 a.m., they can't enter the virtual classroom until 9 a.m. Make, make so you eight, want to set it for like 8.50 or 8.55 so they can mm -hmm. join a couple minutes early so you're ready to begin at 9. Um, can I have can you modify that afterwards? No, you may not. No. You would have to add a new bongo from the Moodle page and add a new meeting. And then uh, oh. eliminate the other one? You have to delete the other one. Yeah, okay. Can I have a quick question? Um, so... Like at 8.55, even if I'm not there, can two students, they can talk each other or no? No. No, okay. Right, so I'm going to click now so we can get in and hit save. Now, this next page that we get to will be the same page that your students see. So if you were to schedule a meeting, if I had picked a date right there and I said my date's going to be 326, students could still get to this page. It's just that the button at the bottom wouldn't be active. It would say your meeting starts in um, seven days, four hours, and two minutes. And that's when the link would be active. But they can still get to this page, which does, which does have call-in information. So if anybody is familiar with Zoom or Hangouts, how you can call in on a cell phone, you can do that with Bongo also. And then it has a short pin to enter for the meeting room specifically. But so you can get that and share that with students ahead of time. Um, you can see here that we do Chrome, Firefox um, is generally where we're going with that. Um, in terms of browsers, and then if you are on an iOS device, to use Safari. And one of the nice things about Bongo is that in terms of like joining a meeting, students, um, it's actually very device friendly. So students can join from cell phones, you can host from a cell phone, tablets, etc. Let me see, I have a picture somewhere. All right, so for the virtual classroom, you can get into the virtual classroom on a Mac, a PC, an iPhone, an iPad, or an Android tablet. Um, you can record video in all of these items. You can't share your desktop on a phone, but you can on a Mac or a PC. Um, all of the other presentation features and communication features though are um, accessible from all of these different devices. So it is super compatible that way. But now I will go ahead and enter the meeting room. All right, um, this comes up every time because it wants to know if you're planning on using your computer microphone or if you're going to be calling in or just listening. So I'm gonna go ahead and select microphone 
And the first thing that comes up is an echo test. So if you talk, you should hear yourself echo. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so, and then it'll kind of open up. And this is where we are going to do the presentation. And if you're having a live session, this is where students would show up and you'd have a live session, or this is where we're going to do the recording. Now, on the super basic level, if you just have a PowerPoint and you wish to show your PowerPoint, all right, um, you are the easiest way to do it is a screen share. So down at the bottom of the screen here, we have four buttons. If you're listen only, you won't have the microphone button. Um, one of the nice things is you can see the microphone pulsing, so you know it's still picking up your sound. But the button, the little circle, all the way on the right in the bottom is the share your screen one. So if you click on it, it will ask you to share your screen. If you are using Firefox, this will actually come up with a little drop down right up here from the URL bar. I am in Chrome, so it gives me this pop-up window. Then I can go ahead and select a screen to share. It does give you different options. The same thing with Firefox, like if you just want to share a tab or something specific. Um, kind of as a fail safe, I recommend going with entire screen. That way, if you did want to change between like a website and your PowerPoint, um, you don't have to worry about it. It would all show up in the screen share. And then the other item would be, um, if you have your PowerPoint open and then try to, and say like, I'm gonna select my PowerPoint screen here or my application here. I have one that says PowerPoint. So if I were to share this PowerPoint, it only shares the application itself. When you start the PowerPoint show, computers actually think that the show is a different application from the PowerPoint itself, from like where you would work on the PowerPoint. So to be safe, entire screen. All right, and then I can click share. You'll know your screen share has started working. Oh, you know what, guys? I should share my same screen with you because I want to show you. So you guys, most of you only have one screen. I have too many screens. <laughs> but so when you share your screen for the first time, you have this inception moment because it'll be your screen, sharing your screen, sharing your screen. So if you get this image, it means your screen share is working correctly. Um, at this point, I would be able to go ahead and hit record if I'm planning on recording my session, but otherwise I could switch and pull my PowerPoint up. I could switch and pull my PowerPoint up, whatever I happen to have open at the time. I don't think I have anything open with multiple slides right now. Maybe, oh, here's one with multiple slides. Um, so then you could do your slideshow and go through it. And whatever is up on your screen, your students will see. And when you're done, you can stop the recording. Are there any questions on the screen share? Um, do we need to have a, like a, PDF file or just any file is okay? Um, for the screen share, any file. So you could have SPSS open, you could have a CAD file, you could have whatever is up on your screen will share in the screen share. So file type is irrelevant in that way. Okay. But I mean, I read somewhere like if we if we hit the plus button, blue one, yes. then- We're doing uh, that one next. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So the screen share is kind of like the most direct, least amount of steps. All right, so then we will go on to the plus button. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the screen share. Um, one of the nice things about Bongo is that kind of wherever um, you use to turn it on, you can also use to turn it off. So to start a screen share, you hit the button at the bottom to stop a screen share you hit the button again. So kind of going with that one-stop shop theme, just like recording. You hit the not recording, hit the same place to stop the recording. Now, 
The other way that you can share a presentation with students is by uploading your presentation to Bongo. Um, a couple of reasons why you might want to do that is that you then have annotation tools that you can actually write on your slides or an image. And then the second thing is that if you are recording with an uploaded presentation, it will take each of your slides and make them time stamped table of contents basically for those slides so students can easily jump around in the presentation. So to do that, there is this blue plus button in the lower left corner. If you click on it, you get a couple different options of things that you can kind of add to the virtual classroom space. Um, the top three breakout rooms, mute all and initiate a poll are only helpful if you are doing a live session. Um, otherwise, we have upload a presentation for recorded and live sessions. Um, it takes you to this pre presentation screen. All right. Let me actually find a PowerPoint file. Um, so you, you, as it says here, you can upload any Office document or PDF, and a PDF is recommended um, for best results. Part of the reason is that it takes whatever you upload and changes it into these SVG images. And so sometimes the scaling can get a little bit off. So I'm actually going to upload just a regular PowerPoint after I find one. <laughs> So I'm going to upload one as a PowerPoint just to show you. Um, but sometimes, oh no, I saved that one as a PDF. Let's just do. Here's a PowerPoint. Um, sometimes the scaling can get a little bit off, and so if you're a person who goes all the way to the very edge of your slides, uses fancy fonts, or moves the text boxes around a lot um, from like where they come up in the templates, it might look wonky, and you'd be better off with the PDF version. But after you pick your file, um, you'll notice it says to be uploaded. You can go ahead and hit start. It'll take a second to convert your file to the SVG images. Um, depending on how big your PowerPoint is, it may take longer, it may take less time. After your PowerPoint is uploaded, you'll see it here and you can navigate by using these arrows at the bottom. Um, you can see here's one where I should have done a PDF because this page got all sorts of crazy. So this is an example of why you'd want to do the PDF over a straight PowerPoint. Um, it happened a couple times. <laughs> and so I had the other PDF version. But so it's kind of 50-50 if you don't take the time to put it in PDF, whether it would work here or not. So you can also use this drop down to jump between your slides. So if you kind of make a note and say like slide one is this, two, 10, 12, whatever they are, if you tend to be a person who has to jump around and go back to different ones, you can do so. Um, now, one of the nice things, like I said about this is if you're recording, we have annotation tools. So over here on the right side of the screen, we have this toolbar. The top one starts off with this arrow. You can see that's what's giving me the red dot, just kind of like a pointed highlighter. But if you click it, it gives you different options. So the one that's most used would be this pencil icon. You can change your thickness, you can change your color, and then you can go and kind of highlight where you are on your slide as you're talking. Um, annotations will not stay here. So if you're a person who usually likes to bring up one bullet point at a time, this will have all of the bullet points on the screen. But like I said, then you can kind of use this tool and say, all right, this is where we are now on this bullet point. So you can follow along. Um, there's also a text feature. So you kind of do like a click and draw box. You can change the size. You can change the color. Here's something I forgot to write. And it will be there. When you were done doing your lecture and writing, you can always just stop the recording and you're good to go. Um, there is an undo button for annotations. So if you draw somewhere and you make a mistake, 
You can hit the undo and it will delete the last thing done on that slide. You can also hit the clear all button to clear all of the annotations that you made. Um, any questions on that so far? Uh, Kat, can you write in a blank, uh, like a page and do some math problems there or no? Yeah, you can. You could just build a blank page in. The other thing is that if you go back to this upload presentation area, this default PDF is just 10 white pages that are blank all of the time. Oh, okay. So okay. you could always jump over to here and just start to like write, you know, your problem, whatever it is, and go through all of the steps and discuss. And then when you hit the plus button again, you can use this check mark to switch back to your presentation and it keeps oh. you on the same slide that you were already on before. Good. I'm glad to see you kept the math simple for Kate. <laughs> <laughs> yes, simple math. It's I'm my brain is too fried for anything more complex right now. <laughs> but all right, so here we are. Like I got it wrong, but <laughs> <laughs> um so now I'm going to go over some of the additional features if you are doing a live lecture or just um, another option for you would be if you wanted to turn your camera on in your recording or live lecture down at the bottom of the screen. One of our another bubbles here is the video menu. So you can share your camera in this space and have it recorded and visible to students during the lecture or live session. So here I am again. Um, one of the cool things for a live session um, would be that over here we have a user list. So if you click the little person icon, you'll get a list of users. Um, there is a public chat feature also. So you can either click here or you could just click the chat button. The chat area, area you'll notice also has the numbers that were on this original Bongo meeting lobby page. So if you forgot them for any reason, they are also right in here. If you are recording and you send a, so I'm gonna turn the recording on. If you send a file while you are recording, um, it will show up as part of the recording. Whatever you type in the chat while the recording is happening will show up as part of the recording. So that's kind of a nice feature because you could maybe do like a overview and then say, here's the project, or you could send them some websites of additional readings. And when they go to review the recording, those would all be there. Um, over here, if there were multiple people in this Bongo meeting, they would have a couple different options. So one is set status. So it's kind of an easy way to get like a mini read of the room. So you could ask all of your students to set their status on how they're feeling for the day. So they might give you a thumbs up, a thumbs down, but since you're not there to physically see them and how they're feeling, this might be a good way to start out a live lecture. Um, one option that's not here that would be if there were multiple people is to make presenter. So if you're a class that relies on other students presenting their own materials and such, um, you can actually promote them to presenter and then they would have all of these same options that you had. So they could share their screen, they could upload a presentation and kind of go for five minutes and say, hey, here's my file, here's my PowerPoint, they could write on it, all the fun stuff. And then when they were done, you could make yourself the presenter again, or you could make the next student in line the presenter. Any questions so far? There's lots of things. <laughs> All right. Um, another couple things that are in here if you're doing a live session would be the multi user mode. So if we look right now, when I'm over here to write, I just have this red dot. If I were to turn on multi-user mode, you'll notice it has my name. So if you have multi-user mode on, all of your students could be writing on the PowerPoint or annotating. Or if you had students that needed to do a group presentation, they would both be able to annotate on slides that were on while they were talking and presenting. Um, 
back over to our fancy plus button, we have the initiate a poll option. So if you wanted to pull your students in the middle of a session and say like, do we have any questions? How are we feeling? Or give them some choices. Um, you can also create your custom, like if you wanted to ask them what their favorite color was, um, the poll would come up. You can see up at the top of the screen here in the background how it would look for students. And then when they click on it, you can publish the results or keep them to yourself, but they show up on the bottom of the screen if you choose to publish. And there's also a mute all button. So if they forgot to mute themselves, and <laughs> you're like, it's too noisy, I can't take it. You can mute them all really quick and be good to go there. But, um, if you are also doing a live lecture, you may be interested in the settings. So if we look up here in the settings for Bongo, um, one thing I always do is turn on the auto audio and pop-up alerts for the chat, because if I'm giving a live lecture, I'm not necessarily staring at the chat. So doing this will kind of give me two ways that I might be notified if a student does submit a question. And then the other thing for participants is that I might turn off the private chat so they're not able to send each other private messages. Um, I might also turn the camera off so they don't feel obligated to have their cameras on or if I'm concerned about bandwidth or anything like that. Or if someone has poor internet, I can just turn those off so they don't have to worry about dealing with those. Catherine, could you repeat how you got to that again? Um, up here in the upper right corner is the three vertical dots for the kebab menu. So here is where we have the settings option, which is where we just were. This is also where you will go when you are ready to end or leave the meeting. So the difference between end meeting and leave meeting is that like if you had a meeting scheduled for 855 and you got in it at nine and then you need you left it, you'd be able to come back during like a half hour time frame at the beginning. Whereas if you hit end meeting, it closes the meeting room and nobody can get back in it. At least for a live session, your recording would still happen if you had hit record and the link would turn into the recording, but nobody would able to be joined the, to join the session live again after you hit end meeting. Okay, great, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, any other questions in here in Bongo? All right, I'm going to go ahead then and I will end this meeting. And then I will show you a sample of what a recording looks like. So um, it does have processing time afterwards. So this link right now that we use to get into the Bongo meeting, if I click on it, because I ended the meeting, you can see that it was here. You can see what time it was. Um, but the recording's not available yet. It, so it does take processing time. So for anybody who is familiar with Panopto, how you recorded your video and had to wait for it to process, the same thing happens here. It's just nice that you don't have to wait with it while it processes. It kind of does it on its own in the background. So after it processes, which I generally say um, two to three minutes per recorded minute for processing time has been my personal experience. Um, but here's a recording that is old. It's from the fall when Advocacy Day happened and we recorded sessions. So this is how recordings display. Over on the left side of the screen, we will have the PowerPoint or screen share. And on the right side of the screen, you will have the webcam. Um, down at the bottom, if you had chosen to upload your PowerPoint, this is where it becomes that interactive table of contents. And then down below the webcam are chat messages and any attached files that were done while the recording was on. If you attach a file before you hit record, it wouldn't show up here. You have to hit record first and then attach the file or send a message in the chat. Um, so when you hit play here, I'll turn the volume off. Um, if you don't have anything on the webcam side, this will just be a big black box, but students can watch the presentation or annotations in full screen if they need to. 
Um, they could also watch just you in full screen if you happen to be somebody who has material where you are just discussing it with them and kind of sharing things rather than having a PowerPoint. So either one, you can get full screen and then you can click on a slide to kind of jump there and kind of go back and hear it again if you missed a part or the different items. Any questions? No, you're very quiet. <laughs> That's good now. All right, we have no chat messages. So we are good there. Um, so if you are nervous about this whole process going into next week, um, I would recommend that you go with the recorded option first. Um, there's a little less pressure with the recorded option because you don't have students right there um, when you're also trying to figure it out. Um, if you are going to do a live session, maybe offer students like a quick 10 minute um like a practice one, just say, here's an optional one at some time or during one of your class times, like early in the week and say, if you can join, join, just make sure everybody can get on for your class, that you set it up right, that you are comfortable with the tool before you do a live session. Um, let's see, what else? If you have multiple sections of the same class and you are looking to share a lecture with multiple sections or another class, please email me and I will set up something for you called the workspace. So part of um, Bongo helping maintain HIPAA compliance and such is that you cannot copy this link or here. Yeah, you cannot copy the link. So like this is going to turn into our recording. If you were to copy it and just paste it somewhere else outside of your Moodle course, it's still going to prompt you to log in. Um, it kind of protects you if you want, so that way students can't just take your recordings, your lectures, and share them out wherever. Um, but there is a way to get a public URL that you could share. And then once that public URL is out there, of course, students could take it and share it wherever, also if they felt so inclined. But let me pull one up. Not that one. Mm -hmm. oh. Sorry, I forgot a course that I put one in. <laughs> Let me see one second. Um, but the workspace is basically uh, a fake Moodle assignment or Bongo assignment. So that way you can get to a special menu within Bongo. But you have to have the assignment there to do it. So here, let me see. Um, so the place that I'm going to show you is where you can get a public URL to share a recorded video and where you could get a public URL to invite someone else to a live lecture. So if you are the type of person that has um, guest speakers a lot, um, it's also nice for you to have because then you can um, send them an invite and they could actually come and participate in your live lecture or even if it was just you and them and kind of doing like an interview to record but it's nice because we can get outside or people outside Marywood involved also let's see 222 I was close guys All right, so if you need this, you can let me know and I will put something called the workspace in your course for you. And when you click on it, you can ignore what comes up on the screen because like I said, this is just a junk assignment for nothing. The reason that we put it in there is so that we can get to this fancy hamburger menu in the upper left corner. And when you click on it, it has meetings listed here. So if you have a meeting scheduled, it will show up in the active meeting area. After you record a meeting, it will show up down here in recorded meetings and over on this far side, 
is the kebab menu for the meeting and it has copy public URL. So you could copy it and then share it with whomever list it in another class and they'd be able to see this recording also. Um, if you did a live lecture and recorded it, you can also see this cool attendance feature where it will show you the name of a person, how long they were in the session and how many times they participated in the chat. Um, if it was an active meeting, so something scheduled in the future, the kebab menu would have a little bit different things, but one of them would be a public invitation list to invite external guests. So, any questions? Yes, no, maybe so. <laughs> it's good. Everything good, Kat. All right. Thank you. Yeah. So that's all I have for you about the bongo. Does anyone have any specific questions or anything else that I can help with while you're here? So uh, in terms of the students, we just need to give them like a, just tell them go to your Moodle and just click on the live lecture. Or, that's all right. Yes. For the students, it's super easy because you'll just Do say find the bongo and click on it. Do they need to install anything or now? No. no. Okay, good, thanks. No, nope. no installation needed, which is kind of nice. That's one of the reasons that I prefer it to something like Zoom because the Zoom, you know, it has like install the browser thing and it takes a second, whereas this has none of that. Like they'll click on the link and it goes directly to that, um, that enter meeting page. The meeting lobby is what they call it. Good. Um, also, so while you're here, um, I guess we won't go that way, we'll go from here. So if you go to our EdTech website, so marywood.edu slash EdTech, that's where we have our academic continuity things linked. Mm -hmm. um, if you click on that, it takes you to the academic continuity homepage. Um, so here you can schedule a personal consult with me if you have issues or questions on how to use any of the tech. But down here is e-learning resources. And when you get here, there's a bunch of different things and whatnot. Um, but there's live training documents. So all of these recordings are listed here along with FAQs that have been asked in the sessions that have been updated. So you can see all of those. And then there's also Bongo resources. We gave Bongo its own page since there's so much that it can do. Oh, I should share this. Um, this document right here, though, I'm going to... I want to show you, so we will do two. Um, it's a step by step. Sorry, guys, I kicked myself out. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. When I reloaded there. Um, but so this is a step by step, as I was saying. Let me present again. All right. So, can you guys see my screen? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, here, step by step, super basic how to create the activity in Moodle, set up the lecture start your lecture and make the recording so uh, sorry yeah. how did you get to that page sorry one more time please uh, yeah sure so if you go to marywood.edu slash edtech so e-d-t-e-c-h sure click on academic continuity home mm -hmm. within our e-learning resources we have a bongo page mm -hmm. 
So it will all show up okay. here. Um, uh, so there's other documents about using Bongo lectures. Um, this document right here mm -hmm. is sample language that you can send your students if you're planning on doing a Bongo lecture sure. or a live class, I should say. Um, so if you're doing a class where you'd like your students to have their video or audio turned on, and then it's also linked to different resources. So you could send them this link, um, this information, and it has things for them about testing their microphone, testing their webcam, how they can share their webcam once they are in there, and how they can participate in the chat or share a file once they're in there. Um, if you're interested in the student presenter option, there's language for that with additional resources for the student about how they would upload their presentation, how they could annotate on their presentation or share their desktop. Mm -hmm. So we kind of set these up for you to help with whatever you're planning on doing if you're doing a live session. Good. But, um, and then down here, if this ends up being a longer stint than three weeks, um, you might be interested in the Bongo projects and um, Bongo question and answer items. Those are two, two of their tools that are kind of neat. And um, just down here for reference, it's the Bongo browser and device compatibility. So this chart right below it is the one that um, we looked at earlier for the virtual classroom. Mm -hmm. This one over here, this bigger one is for all of the other Bongo assignments. So the independent project, group project, interactive video and question and answer. All right. Now I think that's everything. <laughs> Good. Thank you very much. Yep. Um, I will actually take this link in here. I'll throw it in the chat. So you guys have the direct link now. Are there any other questions or concerns that you guys have that I could help with? This is Mary Grace. I have a question. Um, with regard, there's a dial-in number. Do they have to use that or can they ex access it just through the laptop just like we are? Yeah, they can do it just like we are. That's just there for if they don't have a microphone. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, if they do dial in, um, anything that they say on the phone would also be recorded. Um, I will say that if you have um, videos that you normally like to share, like if you would give a lecture and then like play a video clip in class, um, doing a recording of other video clips and music doesn't work out so well. Um, it kind of gets glitchy. And even if it's playing smoothly for you, there's a chance it may not play smoothly for them. So your options would be to either send it to them in advance and say, watch this before our lecture or um, you would share them in the chat or via file while you're giving the lecture so they could watch it afterwards. But doing them live itself in a recording gets a little weird. I think junky is my best word to describe it thus far. <laughs> like it may get pixely, it may pause funny, even though you have good bandwidth and they have good bandwidth, it doesn't work out too well. Great. Good. All right. Maybe for real, that's all I have now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kat. You're welcome. Oh, well, thank you, Kat. You're welcome, guys. If you need anything else, you can email me or submit a ticket, and we will be on it. All right. Sure. Thank Appreciate you. It. Take care. Bye. Have a nice Bye. morning or afternoon, wherever we are. <laughs> <laughs>